the verse number one. Follow me carefully. The Bible says, Thou sayest the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus. I'm going to run you through. This is a breakthrough journey I'm running you through. Hallelujah. So follow me carefully. Then after that, you will see a very key thing there, which will be our emphasis for today's meeting. And then you will go away. Hallelujah. Thou sayest the Lord to his anointed Cyrus. If the Bible is yours, I want you to underline the word anointed. Whose right hand I have held to subdue nations before him. Listen, one of the things that will hinder your breakthrough is opposition. What is not making you breakthrough is opposition. So the nations here stands for opposition. Hallelujah. So until you subdue your opposition or your opponent, you can't break through. Do you get what I'm telling you? Yes. He said, to subdue nations before him. He said, I will unarm and unjear the loins of kings to open doors before him and the gates will not be shut. Bloody koto malasaha. Today, some anointing will come upon your head. I said, some anointing will come upon your head. And you subdue your opponents. You will subdue any opposition in your life. You will lose the birth and the loins of kings. And he said, the gates will not be shut. The gates, the gates. Listen, there are gates. Hallelujah. That is why we have the gates of hell gates Jesus said I will build my church and the gates of hell so the moment Jesus mentioned the church which is you and I the next thing he mentioned was gates so what stands against you are gates hallelujah gates of limitations restrictions strongholds they are gates but thanks be unto our God he said, the gates of hell shall not prevail. I don't know the gate that is after your life. That is not enabling you to break through. But today, that gate will fall. In the name of Jesus. Go on to say that. And I will go before him and level the mountains. In other words, to make the crooked place straight, I will break in pieces the doors of bronze and cut asunder. The parts of iron. Hallelujah. These things are breakthrough journeys. And to listen, you can be exalted. Certain things must be destroyed. Am I telling you? Okay. And listen to me carefully. No limitation and no barrier, no opposition can ever and ever overpower the supremacy of the name Jesus, of the anointing, and even of the word of God. Hallelujah. There are three things that is ever supreme and ever powerful. One, the anointing. Nothing can defeat the anointing. Hallelujah. Oh, amen. To the word of God. God said, I have lifted my word even far above my name. Let me tell you, the word of God is even powerful than God. Hey, what are you saying? Listen, the most dangerous thing you can ever do is to doubt the word of God. Hallelujah. When you doubt God, you limit him. And when you doubt the Lord, you limit him. That is why the Bible says that when the angel came to Mary, the angel said to Mary that blessed is he that believeth in these things for there shall be a performance of the things he has believed. Amen. And when the same angel visited Zacharias, Zachariah doubted instead of believing. 
and he became a damp. So, I always say that the word of God plus unbelief is equal to a damp priest. Jeremiah and Zechariah was a priest. He, damp, he doubted the integrity of God's word. He became damp. An innocent virgin believed those words and there was a performance. The word of God plus your belief is equal to performance. That's why the Bible said that if only thou can believe all things, all, not some, all things are possible to them that believe. Listen, the problem is not, you know, you know, everybody believes in something. Do you know that? The problem is that which you believe. Because that which you believe, will be, there will be a performance. If you believe in fears, fear will overtake you. If you believe in witchcraft, listen, like joke, like joke, witches will kill you. Likewise, if you believe in the word of God, oh, Shadabaha, there is a performance, a performance of that which you believe in. Hallelujah. The Bible spoke these things about Abraham. He said, there was a, he never doubted the promise of the Lord through unbelief, but he was full of faith. Giving glory to the Lord. For he believeth in the Lord who called things which are not as though they were. He believeth in the Lord who called even light out of darkness. What was the result of Abraham's faith? Listen. He saw Isaac. Though he was a hundred years old. Have you believed in something and you have not seen it? Doubt your doubt and believe in the word of God. There shall be a performance. Of that which you believe. And the word is saying. Thou sayest the Lord. To his anointed. Take the Cyrus from there. And put your name there. Thou sayest the Lord. To his anointed Beatrice. Whose right hand I have holding. To subdue nations. The nations we hear from somebody today. In the name of Jesus. He says that. And I will subdue kings before him. He says that, and I the Lord, I the Lord, I the Lord, I will cut asunder and I will destroy even the gate of brass and of iron. I the Lord will do it and I will cause the gates will never be shut for him. I always tell people that where God cannot take me in, I don't want to get there. Hallelujah. <laughs> and what God can't give me, I don't want to have it. But um, Ironically, ask yourself, where can't God take you? No se mala alikoloshe parozini misa. God took the son of a petty, a fetish priest called Abraham. He took him from a village called Mesopotamia, and he walked through. He walked with him in a journey to Canaan. And he became a patriarch of faith. Abraham's father was an idol worshiper. He was called Terah. Terah's brother was called Nahor. And their great grandfather was called Nimrod. Nimrod was a great guru. You get me? In the land of Mesopotamia. But God picked him. And he became a patriarch of faith. Where can't he take you? You will leave this service and you will travel to places. I said, nations will hear from you. Never doubt anything. One time I read about this man of God. He was called Osofa Mwaku. He never went to school. But he went to Britain to preach. When he goes, he preached in Chi. And they would translate. Listen to me. What can limit the unlimited God when he says he will use you? One day he picked a woman from nowhere. His name was called Ruth. He picked him from a Gentile nation. And he, the Lord, brought him to Boaz. See the Lord sending you to your Boaz. 
somebody is joking with you and he is messing with your life but you will live here and the lord will take you to your boas i said the lord will take you to your boas i see the lord bringing naomi to you i see your naomi coming in the name of jesus the lord will take you to your boas he will cause you to break through yes some anointing will come upon your life let me continue he says i will give him the treasures of darkness and the hidden riches of the secret place that you may know that i the lord i am the god of israel who call by your name for the sake of jacob my servant and of israel my chosen i have called you and i have said named you abadakosata goes on the verse 5 says that and i the lord there is no one else there is no god beside me i will get and arm you hallelujah listen when god purpose in his heart to do something by his providence and by his sovereignty your mistakes even does not count some people they say that I'm not holy enough to merit these blessings. <laughs> Hallelujah. If God is counting on your holiness to do something for you, are you really sure you will really get something? Let me show you something from the Bible. You read the book of Matthew, chapter number one, and you trace the descendants of Jesus Christ. I was shocked. When I saw Rahab, the harlot, I was even shocked to see Jesus coming from the loins of Judah and coming from Nazareth. But by his providence, harlot was also part. It tells us something that when God purpose in his heart to do something, he does not depend on your righteousness to do it for you. Today, come what may, you will break through. I said, come what may, you will break through. You will say true in the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Listen to me carefully. For his name's sake and for his purpose's sake. You know, this Cyrus God chose. He was a Gentile king. He didn't know God. He was a Jew. Do you get me? You know, in the Old Testament, salvation was for the Jews. They were the people that God knew. Eh? But God used the Cyrus to fulfill his purpose. It was this king eh, who, in his era, made the Israelites left captivity and they went back to Jerusalem to build the temple for God. And he was a Gentile king. God will use even an unbeliever to bless you when you live here. In the name of Jesus. He was a Gentile king. He didn't know the Lord. But do you know what enabled him to do what he could do? That is what my emphasis is on. People don't just do things. There are abilities, capabilities that comes to people. There are things God endowed to people so that it gives them extraordinary skills and abilities to do that which an ordinary man cannot do. No, we have underestimated the power of the anointing. And at times, eh, you will see that people have misinterpreted the anointing like as if touch, you fall down and nothing happens to you. The skin eh, subdue nations. He, he lose every gates. He subdue kings. He, he, he broke down brands and iron so that God's people can be liberated. What he used to do all those things was because of the anointing. But 
thou sayest the Lord to his anointed Cyrus. When the anointing come upon your head, you do the unthinkable. When it, when it comes upon your life, your background does not matter. Do you get me? When the anointing come upon your life, I always say that anoint men, they make noise. They make news. In, you see, in the book of Acts, eh, the book of Acts gives us a very nice scenario. You will see people who were illiterate. None of them went to school. Jesus Christ's disciples. None, 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 none. And they were even finding it difficult, difficult to interpret some parables Jesus told them. Jesus was speaking. He said, they would come and say, why, why do you speak to these people only in parables? But, listen, a very sharp contrast took place when the Holy Ghost came upon them. Peter, who ran away? Peter, who ran away? from a little boy. That same Peter, a fisherman. He didn't even know how to talk. He preached. How many people gave their life to Christ? 3,000. This is an extraordinary thing. The, the Bible said that they turned the world upside down. Only 12 men. That is the power of the anointing. No, think of this thing. The Bible says, and the spirit of the Lord came upon Samson. And he killed thousand Philistines with a jawbone of asp. Have you thought of it? Listen. The anointing, I always say that it is the lubricant of life. When it is smeared on you, you will walk through life with friction. I'm telling you. The anointing is the lubricant of life. When it comes upon your life, gates will crumble. Mountains will be, will be, will be flat before you. Listen, it was not the doings and the power of Elijah that made him overtook Ahabo. It was the anointing. At times in life, some people are on chariots. Let me tell you the truth. Some people, eh, the kind of places and the kind of family they are coming from, even if they choose not to work again, their great, great grand people will never suffer. And listen, we are competing with such people. How can you overpower such chariots? Some people, they are connected, connected. Yes, they are in a chariot. What will make you overpower the Bible said, and the spirit of the Lord. See, and the spirit of the Lord. When, when I scream, I see something has come upon my life. And the spirit of the Lord came upon Elijah. And he overtook Ahab. That shatter. The spirit, that spirit will come upon you. You will overtake certain things. You will overtake some people. In the name of Jesus. Look at anybody who was exalted in life. And I will teach you somebody who was anointed by the Lord of hosts. One time I was reading my Bible. The Lord ministered something powerfully to me. The Lord showed me something from the book of Revelation. Chapter number 5, the verse number 10. The Bible says that, okay, he has redeemed us from every language, every tribe, and every nation. And has made us priests and kings unto our God. And the Lord told me, Stephen, watch it. Now, you are a king and a priest. Let me ask you this question. Did you ever read anywhere in the Bible... Where a king was ever enthroned without anointing? 
I begin to flip through my Old Testament. Amazingly, people of God, I saw that none of the people who ever became king in the Bible did so without the anointing on their head. None. None. If you can point me to anybody from the Old Testament who was ever a king and, and they didn't anoint him, I watched it. And then the Lord told me, listen, without the anointing, you will forever be, remain in obscurity and in notoriety. You will forever be notorious. I watched it again. Listen, that which brings people from obscurity into celebrity is anointing. You can be a deliverer like Moses. When he attempt delivering his people, they said, who made you Lord over us? <laughs> you know, that was the same thing they told Moses. Who made you Lord over us? He ran away. Though his destiny, he was a, he was a deliverer. He ran away. Then he attempted doing his assignment. But thank God at the wilderness, he met Yahshua. And he said, put down your rod. And the rod turned into a snake. You know, at times when the anointing had not come upon you, listen, your own will even reject you. And at times, listen, when the anointing has not come over you, you will not know that your rod can turn into a snake and can swallow certain things. When the spirit came upon him and he knew what he had, by the reason of the anointing that came upon him at the wilderness, he came and he succeeded. I see that grace coming upon your life. No, no. The reason why you are suffering, suffering is because, listen, I'm going to say that I will tell you. I'm going to say that God, I will see you through. Let me, let me give you one testimony I had. One time, I was preaching. I was preaching on Facebook. It was Facebook. 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 Somebody popped on my, on, on my timeline and I prophesied to the person. The prophecy was not even all that accurate. I said, the Lord said, you have something on your throat. The Lord said, you are sick, I should pray for you. Ah. So after the prophecy, the person embossed me. He said, man of God, I am from the United States. What you said, I'm the one, prayed for me. That same week, I had a monogram. Within that same week, the swelling disappeared. Within that same week, he went and spoke to me about his pastor. Within that same week, they wrote me invite. What are you talking about? This is anointing. Do you get me? Act yourself. How many people meet on social media? Has it not been scam and frosters? He said, I the Lord, I will lose the birth of kings. I the Lord, I the Lord, I will make sure that no gate is open, no gates. Even when you go and your east is following your walls, it be who will open the gate? It be God. Do you get me? Never be ashamed of your inefficiencies. When God decides to bless you, He does not care. Who cares? The one who has called us, has anointed us, and has established us is God. Not man. Let man be a liar. Let God be the true God. When he blesses, no one can curse. Yes. Even if I'm leaping, don't worry. Hallelujah. Maybe you will see that your forehead is big. Don't worry. The Lord will give you a financial mogul. And when the Lord gives it to you, listen. When you are working, you are ringing it like this. You know my ring? Hallelujah. I mean, the Lord will surprise somebody today. I said, the Lord will surprise you today. Our God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should change his mind. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. That is what the anointing will do for you. You know, some people, they think the 
that they so qualified like the sons of um, like the siblings of David Adonijah, Absalom and Co. Meanwhile, the Lord the Lord said I have found David with my holy oil have I anointed him. He said the wicked will not exalt upon him. I will beat down his foes before him. My, my hand will establish him and man him. That is the anointing. That is the anointing. When it comes upon you, people only have only one option than to celebrate you. Even your enemies, it is dangerous to fight the anointed of the Lord. It's dangerous. It's dangerous. That is why the Lord said, touch not my anointed. Is that <laughs> can you clap for Jesus? It is dangerous for your enemies to fight you from today because the anointing is going to come upon your life. I said the anointing is going to come upon your life. Yes. No, some of us, if you try to fight us, you are worrying yourself. Oh, hallelujah. Our sufficiency is of God. Paul said that from now, let no man troubles me because I bear the mark of Christ. Yes. The very last thing somebody should ever do is to touch the anointed of the Lord. If I'm lying, go and ask Saul when he touched David. <laughs> the Bible said, listen to me, and the house of Saul grew weaker and weaker because of David. He will reprove kings for their sake, saying, Touch not my anointed and do my problem. That is why I always tell people that never talk against any man of God. If you don't believe that man of God, go away. Start your mouth. Because it is not him. At times, it's not him. At times, it can be that the oil upon his head is genuine. And the spirit of the Lord is a jealous spirit. The spirit of the Lord is a jealous spirit. That is why never steal from a church. And it's dangerous when you steal from a Christian. Do you know why? Because it is the spirit of the Lord that wrought everything a believer has. So when you rob a believer or a Christian, it's like you are robbing this and the spirit will come for you. I'm telling you. I'm telling you a gospel truth. Yes. I want you to walk with this mentality. You know, Jesus came and died so that we can have Emmanuel, God with. God with. Do you know the proof of God with us? It is the anointing. He is with us. He is with us. The spirit is with us. It's upon us and it's in us. It is with us for our defense. It is upon us for our assignment. It is in us for our regeneration. The spirit with us. That's what I'm saying. When the enemy comes in as a flood, the spirit of the Lord will lift a standard against him. Today will be the very last time you will be molested. In the name of Jesus. The anointing of the Lord will come upon your life so strong from today onwards. Listen. Don't see it to be only anointing oil. Listen. Walk with this consciousness that because of the anointing, no one can molest me. One time, people went and let me. I, 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 at times, I like using myself for example, okay, so that you, you, you know that this thing I'm telling you works. People went and speak against me. I was there in my hostel. They came and they, all of them, I, I, I wasn't, they came and apologized to me. Is that, man of God, we said this and this and this about you. I looked at him, I said, oh, sorry, sorry, no problem. One time, one of my son, prophet, Tufua said, Papa, your water is so strong. People spoke against you. Hallelujah. Amen. One time, 2013, we went for TTFPP at Bolga. 
I think I've shared this testimony before. A Muslim insulted me. Hallelujah. The next dawn, 4 p.m., she was at my gate. She said, Osofu, pray for me. Please forgive me. Hallelujah. Listen, it is an error when you serve the Lord eh, and somebody touch you and the person didn't feel anything. It's an error. It's an error when the devil come and mess up with your children and nothing happened to them. You touch me, you are finished. Listen, this is not pride. It's a sign of confidence we have in Christ. What happened to Herod when he touched the early church? The angel of the Lord smote him and Margaret came from his body. Has the, has the God we serve changed? But it's that we now we have changed. We have doubted God. So this now Christianity has become a mockery religion. People talk against men of God and nothing happened to them. What are the days in the days of Indahosa? see a woman so anointed to the stand that a guy will say I'm coming to lie to you the moment the guy will start lying the guy will be, begin to shiver that grace will come upon your life I said that grace will come upon your life they will come to listen one time eh, I was in school in the school, we had a we had, we had a vice president. She was preaching. When she was preaching, and the Lord opened my eyes, and then I, I saw something. Say he saw something. <laughs> I didn't say nothing. So he finished preaching. It was so powerful, and he came to me. I went to her rather because she was my senior. I said, "Woman of God, where were you last night?" Hallelujah. And she kept quiet. Hallelujah. And I said, woman of God, who is called this? And then she was shocked. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the living God. You know, listen to me. Let some anointing come upon your life so that, listen, you will know by discernment when people are lying to you. You will know the intent of people's heart. Yes. Yes. One time, Prophet Marion Abraham, he was preaching, and the people said, We will go and set this man of God up to see whether indeed he's a man of God. And then one pretended that he had a cancer. So when he, end, he, ended, he, he entered the auditorium, he said, Man of God, I have a cancer. Pray for me. And everything was showing. And then the man of God looked at him, Come, you have a cancer, receive cancer. Immediately, he fell down. He was slain dead. You can watch what are they, you can watch at it at YouTube. From today, may you become so dangerous. When the anointing come upon your life, you become dangerous. It makes you dangerous. It makes you extraordinary. It makes you untouchable. It makes you untouchable. Yes, that nobody can mess with you. When you are anointed. Yes. When you are anointed, nobody can mess with you. It is not for only men of God and preachers. No. It's not for only men of God and preachers. No. I had a testimony about one prayer. She was a prayer, prayerful lady. Eh? And three guys were going to play, play her. Do you know what, what? When they entered, all of them fell. Bam. One of them fell. Today an anointing will come upon your life. I said today an anointing will come upon your life. In the name of Jesus. From today you cease to be extraordinary. In the name of Jesus. You cease to be ordinary. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Can you be on your feet? Listen to me. Everybody wants to be unique. 
special and an uncommon person in this world. Until you have something uncommon, you can never become an uncommon person. Until you have something extraordinary, you can never become an extraordinary person. What makes people extraordinary is one, by the anointing. It can pick you from nowhere and position you among the prince. Yes, it's the anointing. But that concert. The anointing can come upon anything. Do you know that? Ah, read the Bible. It came upon an animal. The animal prophesied. He saw right. It came upon people who didn't believe in God. Like this king. Lift up your hands. Nothing qualifies you. Nothing disqualifies you from the anointing. Today is your day. What fights people? What has made you ordinary? What has made you mockery? And people are laughing at you. Today the anointing of the Lord will destroy that thing. Anything that has become a mountain in your life. Anything that is not enabling you to break through, break through limitations. Today the anointing will cut it and destroy it. In the name of Jesus. If the anointing can make an abino a king, you are more than an abino. I see grace, I see anointing coming upon your life. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. I want you to pray this prayer. That Holy Ghost power come upon my life. Holy Ghost power come upon my life. Adiko Sapata. Lena, lift up your voice and pray that prayer. Ladi Bikuzi Prakasata. Ali Kutubi Kapasata Batanda. Ali Grogoto Bisi Kapatata. Take your anointing oil. You brought your, I want you to take it. 